guys, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and today I want to talk to us women folk. As usual, I'm typically talking to women. Um, but that's what's on my channel. But um, I was watching a movie and it made me think about real life because I'm like, women do that all the time. And it's not until we're in the moment until we realize that, ah, hmm, you know, one of those moments. But I want to talk about how we can label people as being weird or acting funny or being defensive or um, being antisocial. The truth of the matter is we don't know what no one has going on, right? So a lot of us... Um, naturally try to protect ourselves and we either protect ourselves by different words or expressions um sometimes by staying away altogether um and then obviously there's those times where things can come off as mean and deep down rooted most of these things are just defense mechanisms i know from that myself, and I even made a video about, you know, the the mean girl, the misunderstood girl, like the girl that, like, oh, she just stuck up and she just aggressive. Um, today, I really want to talk about the person who gets labeled as funny acting. Um, this is something that I heard my entire life, um, not necessarily to me, but um. I would hear different ones in the family say, oh, she funny acting today or she acting weird. And it's, it's only now that I realized that, which even then I had some type of sympathy. I used to say in my mind, because these were adults talking, so we didn't do that. <laughs> but in my mind, I was just like, you don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, and we don't know. We don't know what's going on with anybody. So to jump to a conclusion and a bad one at that is insensitive and immature, I would say. And <clears throat> I wanted to gear up and record me talking about this because it happens way too often. And the one place that it definitely should have more ground for understanding, which is church, seems to be the place where I probably heard it the most, or at least about like church people. Um... I don't know. I think I remember telling y'all how there was a first lady who got it bad. Like, they was like, she funny acting, she weird, she acts some type of way. And now that I am a pastor's wife, I'm like, man, people have no idea what we have to protect ourselves from. Like, people say things just to get a rise out of you. People will look at you a certain type of way, um, say slit stuff. Like, I've been around people who just say the most insensitive things. And it's like, it's almost like rehearsed. Like, you know, like a person geared up for a comedy show and they're getting their punchlines out. And it's like, it kind of feels the same way. Like, uh, I feel like you was waiting for that. Like, you was waiting to be negative and rude and wicked and i just want to because i'm not perfect but i want to bring a light an awareness to some of the things that we may not even pay attention to or look at some things that will probably change our lives for the better we have to learn people especially if you're in ministry and you're dealing with people like you have to learn how to read situations and circumstances and it is not our job to be inspector gadget however we do have a duty to be our brothers and sister keeper and to love our neighbor and you loving me and me loving you would be to pray um to be gentle to be kind this Despite what you receive or you have initially gotten. And that's a big thing because this generation is, I seen a post the other day was like, y'all too quick to forgive people, make people accountable for what they did. It's like, that's not our job. 
and Christians were sharing the post. And it's like, that's not our job. Our job is not to make anyone feel any type of way. It's not to give them what they gave us. It's not tit for tat. That is not biblical at all. We are to love. Love does what? It covers a multitude of sins. If only we understand the dynamic and power of loving, we won't put our time and energy into the cattiness. And this happens a lot with women. And it's disturbing because outside the Christian wall, there's this whole world that we're not a part of. We're here, but we're not of it. And this thing that's going on with women, they trying to build themselves. They're trying to change their bodies. And they pretty much try to create who they think they should be in hopes to getting more attention, more respect, more love, but none of those things mean nothing. This is a deep-rooted issue. We all have our insecurities. We all have our concerns about our bodies, our health, and this, that, and the third, but it's not until you gain, uh, what's the word, um, confidence in who Christ is that you will start to understand that this stuff is meaningless. Sure, the eyelashes out here are getting bigger and larger and wider, but I don't have to do that. Yes, the skirts are getting shorter and tighter. I don't have to do that. Yes, the uh, makeup is getting more contoured and 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 more noticeable and more eye-catching, but I don't have to do that. And no matter what the fashion sense is, the scripture doesn't change. Like, do not be consumed with makeup and jewelry and the outer appearance. Focus on the inside and let the inside shine outside. I found myself um, confiding in my husband. Real, real late pillow talk because we got two kids that just fight. When I say they fight sleep, y'all, they fight sleep. And oftentimes, by the time they fall asleep, they in the bed with us and we fall asleep and it's the next day. <laughs> and it's to the point where it's like, oh, forget it. Don't even fight it. But um, I found myself weary because I was like, there's people all around us and people rather choose to negatively label you than to even think to say, hey, what have you been up to? How are you? What's going on? Like the genuity of that does not exist anymore. It's what's happened because I want to know so I can tell the next person that asked me to figure out what's going on or what was that? So you can have something over your issue and circumstance. You know, like it's that kind of world we live in. And like I said, this has spilled into the church. I shouldn't be drilling you for what's going on in your marriage or your house just so I can feel better, just so I can look good to the next person I get on the phone with. That is disgusting. And no matter, and I heard this preached and taught so many times, like people say, get off the hell of phone. And I used to be like, yeah, that's kind of where I all started. Because I know me personally in my own home, the, the phone almost ruined everything. Like just getting on the phone and talking and gossiping and just, hey, girl, you saw what they had on, you see? And it's like, I've seen God rip people apart because of gossip. I've seen God separate and divide people because they refuse to stop gossiping. I've seen some pretty messed up stuff because someone decided to take someone else's business outside their home or fake friends, fake individuals who say, I'm here for you. I, I want to know what's going on. And it's like, that's no. And then I also seen some prideful situations. Well, that's why this happened to her. And it's like, you're hurt. You're hurt. We have to remember to humble ourselves, to be kind and gentle and loving. Like, gossip should be so far away from us. 
Labeling people should be so far away from us because we are claiming Christ. And none of that looks good. Like, like I said, as a kid, I used to look and say, this is disgusting. Why? No, I, me, I'm the type, I ain't gonna lie. I'd be like, I wonder what's, like, I remember seeing someone and I was like, they didn't even look like themselves. But it was more so I was confused. Like, I wasn't talking about them. But even, because my husband even said, did you pray? And like, that didn't even come to my mind because I was so discombobulated. Like, I couldn't even explain it. It just, I never seen them like that before. And I said, I did not pray. And then I instantly got sad because I'm like, even in that, it's still, I took my eyes off Jesus. Because I did. I, I looked at them. And I looked at that outer appearance. And I'm like, oh, what happened? And that was a moment where I should have just, Lord, whatever is going on with her, whatever it is, Lord, rid her of her burdens, her cares, her issues. Lord, revive her. Make her like new. That should have been my prayer. And that need to be our prayers with anybody we come in contact with. And we're just, oh, it looks like something's happened. Um, this person always coming to church crying and sad. Or this person, they, they quit to come and quit to go. Like, it ain't our job to figure everything out. Like, God didn't make us inspector gadgets. Like, he didn't make us the FBI or LAPD. That's not our job. We're here to love one another and serve God with our whole hearts. And a part of serving God is loving those around us. People are in our lives for a reason, y'all. And we better figure out why so that we can be holy and righteous and we can gather and love and spread it. Because you're not going to spread Jesus through gossip. I can assure you that. That's the one way that somebody who may not even be strong in the Lord walks away from church and stuff. It's like, man, all they do is talk about people. All they do is pick and ridicule and think they're better than somebody else. And guess what? As much as we hate to admit this, something like that does not just fall out of thin air. It ain't just people being immature in Christ and they don't know what, because obviously we know there's immature saints. But one thing that you cannot fake the funk is, is somebody who fake acting like they concerned about you and spreading your business or someone who fake concerned at all. Like you just, you just want to feel like you got one up. And that's normally what it comes to. Like, and we're, I've been there where you hear somebody and you say, dang, I thought my marriage was bad. Or I thought my husband was bad. Like we've done that. But where does that stem from? Why do we have to seek worse bad or even better like why do we have to do that why do we have to compare why why where is the urgency to pray ye for one another we need to be urgent about that that's my two cents i love you guys god bless take care bye